Thanks for staying with us on the conversation on the first half with Delta Situations in Kenya, where the president, William Ruto, has named his cabinet and there are a lot of expectations for the new president. Right now, we switch gears to Guinea, where a former Guinea president and military leader, Captain Musa Dadis Kamara, and several co-defendants were arrested on Tuesday after an interrogation in connection to the stadium massacre of September 28, 2009, on the eve of the trial, opened today, Wednesday, September 28. This is 13 years after a massacre that killed at least 157 people. Now, on that day, tens of thousands of people had gathered at Conakry Stadium to demonstrate the strength of the opposition and the swag Musa Dadis Kamara, who had come to power through a military coup nine months earlier from running for president in January 2010. Soldiers, the police and militia members responded by opening fire in a two-hour rampage that killed at least 157 people. Now, among the suspected perpetrators of the massacre, a former junta leader, Kamara, and three of his once powerful lieutenants, Musa Tegboro Kamara, Claude Peavy, and Sharif Diaby, are set to appear for interrogation, according to a report by the United Nations mandated International Commission of Inquiry. Thousands of people were injured, and at least 109 women were raped in the incident. Will Guineans finally get justice after 13 years? Join us to discuss this and more. We have the head of research and monitoring desk at New Central Television, Abdul Latif Ahmed. Abdul Latif, thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. Now, it's been 13 years uh, since the stadium massacre. Why has it taken so long uh, to even get to a trial uh, process? Uh, it's a good thing that uh, we have gotten to that point where we are able to look into the past and um, re-examine the behavior and actions of people who have been vested with power and protection of the people. Uh, it took this long because uh, the scale of criminality and um, uh, the scale of human rights violation that occurred at that time was beyond imagination because people were killed, women were hounded, they were raped, you, you know, those who resisted were killed. And it was so messy because immediately that happened, the entire stadium was sealed uh, in an attempt to, to cover up uh, evidence. Uh, people have protested, and um, uh, considering the number of human rights bodies, including Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, Avipa, and a whole lot of others, who took their time to investigate, document, and itemize the issues, and you know made it more public. There were video evidences to show that People were violated, people were killed, uh, you know, and it hurt the conscience of, of, of the country. So it may be uh, a process that will be long. Like they say, justice uh, may be delayed, but it will never be denied uh, when uh, providence provides that uh, those who have been violated are able to get uh, justice just uh, as we now have it. Now, while there's some sort of hope that finally the trial process has begun, we know that Guinea has been faced with multiple coups, human rights violations, and financial sanctions from the regional bloc ECOWAS. Now, is there any underlining reason why this trial is happening now under a military junta, of which Kamara was also one of them? Well, what, what is evident is uh, the coming of uh, Domboya, the uh, current uh, military leader of Guinea, uh, signaled, uh, you know, a representation of the general wish of the people. So you have a situation where there was discontent in the country and people were tired about um, uh, Afakonde's attempt to extend, you know, his stay in power, albeit uh, by constitutional amendment. Uh, so when he came in, he understood the mood, the temperament and the sentiment of the people. The idea was to see a transition that would um, usher in uh, a democratic um, uh, rule. Uh, knowing fully well that people have refused to forget about the pains and uh, the uh, uh, atrocities of that event at the stadium, it continues to be at the front burner. So last year, he was at the uh, annual co commemoration of uh, that event, uh, and he promised that he was going to ensure that justice uh, was gotten. And so sometimes this year, he opened up investigation and promised that those who were involved in uh, the violation of human rights would uh, have to face justice. Uh, so for me, I, I believe that he's doing all of this because 
he wants to key into the general um, sentiments of the people, and he understands that is the right thing to do. Do not forget he has exposure. He has had engagement in about eight uh, countries, and um, he understands human rights abuses and human rights violations and the need for pro probity and accountability. Now, Latif, uh, mentioned you, uh, I'm happy you mentioned justice and, you know, seeing to it that justice is served. But is there any guarantee from this uh, Mamadou Dumbuya-led uh, junta that uh, the trial would lead to justice and it would be a free and fair trial? Because Rita and I earlier uh, mentioned a similar situation in neighboring Burkina Faso, where uh, the man that was sentenced in absentia uh, basically was given a red carpet to come into the country and he left. So it seems to be a mockery of justice. Uh, is this just a media trial or a sham, or do we expect that uh, justice will be served? And what has been the people's reaction to this long-awaited trial? First, when you understand that um, the generality of um, Guineans are, you know, in support of uh, the current military leader, from the polls that, you know, we have seen so far, from the uh, general sentiments and even the opposition leaders in Guinea, are fully in support of the, uh, the military leader. Uh, there is an attempt to assume, because we cannot pre preempt what the, uh, uh, the, the rulings from you know, the trials will, will come out with. However, we can assume, considering uh, him being um, objective about having to try those in the military, those who were involved in this case, we may want to look at it from a more uh, a positive uh, perspective and, and believe that the trial will be fair. However, uh, until the process commences, until outcomes are reached, uh, we cannot really, uh, it may be, it may so be too you, early. So you just to give tell. the benefit of doubt? Absolutely. Okay, as long as the benefit of doubt, there's still this perception that Guinea have is this culture of impunity. Now, soldiers barricaded the stadium and you know, committed this atrocious act, even though uh, there are still uh, allegations that this was under the mastermind of uh, the former ex, the former Guinea leader, Kamara. Now, do you think that this will hamper justice? And do you think the soldiers in Guinea are above the law? Usually when you have military uh, leadership anywhere in the world, what it means is that you have less ac accountability. You are, you are only accountable to a select few. Uh, in that case, there are chances that there will be, uh, uh, you know, injustice in the in the country. There will be uh, a tendency for for uh, probity and accountability to be uh, obstructed. Um, that is one. However, uh, nothing at the moment shows that uh, the panel will not be able to pull through uh, proper cross examination and investigation to ensure that. Uh, you know, the right facts are established and those who are involved are penalized. Again, until we see the outcome, we cannot tell because uh, sometimes you have theatrics, you have sham, you have, you know, just make-believe arrangement for people to assume that um, uh, the needful is being done. But until we, we get the outcomes, uh, we cannot be too sure if um, uh, what the intentions of uh, Colonel Domboya, you, you know, is at the moment. Now, Latif, uh, the man at the center of this all, uh, Captain Dadis Kamara, who's been leaving in exile in Burkina Faso, returned to Conakry on Saturday night to stand trial, but has long denied the allegations. I mean, it's quite brave of him to return to the country. What do you make of his return? Is it a sign of confidence that, look, I didn't give the orders for the soldiers to open fire in the stadium, uh, or does it give some level of confidence to the judiciary uh, in Guinea. The Guinean government has continued to assure um, all those involved that they will get fair hearing and um, there is a chance that those who stay in exile are, are even worried about their lives because while in exile they, they could be taken out if they refuse to return to face uh, justice. However, uh, having been given or guaranteed uh, justice, um, you know, it's fine that he has come in. What he may not know is uh, if there are, there are evidence against him that has not been presented at the moment for which um, that will be needed to properly convict him, you know, before the judicial uh, panel. 
All right, thank you so much, Abdul Latif Ahmed. Uh, the trial process begins today, and we do hope that it becomes fruitful and justice is definitely served because of the lots of people that died the during the, uh, yeah. the stadium massacre. Thank you so much, Abdul Latif. Thank, thank you, you so much for your time. As thank always. you. Okay, this is where we drop the anchor in today's conversation. The first half of the show, we did talk about uh, President William Ruto of Kenya's appointment of 22 members to his cabinet. Seven women uh, were appointed and it did fall short of his promise of 50% of his cabinet. And in the second half of the program, we just concluded our conversation with Adlatif Ahmed on the trial of Captain Musa Dadis Kamara, who the Guinean government feels is responsible for the massacre that occurred 13 years ago. Thank you very much for being a part of the program and Benga Aboroa. And don't forget the conversation does not end here. You can join us on our social media platforms at New Central TV. I'm Rita Amwadia. See you again on Friday.